it's uh it's a really terrific product send me your reviews i love to hear about it all right uh one one final note on this uh John Carlson piece. I was just talking about the Wall Street Journal. He's the one who put that statistic out about gun ownership going up and gun homicide rates going down and crime rates too. He he has a couple solutions and um, I just wanted to hit on these because I think they're really good ones too and I want to move on. But, uh, you know, number one, folks, remember the... The United States is a free country and freedom, you know, does have a price. We're never going to guarantee, you know, the, the, you want absolute security, then, you know, you can have a police state. That's not what we do. And and the way we handle the, let's say, complications, because there are some that come along with liberty, Joe. Liberty means there are going to be some people among us who, and I don't mean this in a bad way. I don't mean liberty is a pejorative. I just mean that a, a free society there are going to be people in a free society who take advantage of that. Of there course. are going to be people who at some point buy weapons, knives, guns, bombs, whatever it may be, um, and will use them to, to hurt, injure, or kill others. Now, the way to stop that altogether is to live in a police state. No one can buy ammonium nitrate. No one can buy any kind of fuel. No one can buy knives, scissors, anything else. You're certainly not allowed to buy a firearm, ammunition, or anything like that. Now, that would be, in effect, a police state. It's also known as a jail. And by the way, mm. interestingly enough, weapons still make it into jails where people get shanked and stabbed every day. So even police state tactics don't necessarily work in actual uh, de jure police states, okay? Um, the way we handle liberty in a free society is we allow people the freedom to, you know, as long as you don't impact on the freedom of others to do things. But we enact penalties if you abuse those freedoms. This is the problem I've always had in the gun control debate, Joe. And I always hate the term because you're not going to control guns as we've seen in Australia. You're only going to control people. I said in a speech five years ago. <sighs> Folks, when you go, the best, here's the best way to describe this. You, you know the old fire in a movie theater line? Well, you have the right to free speech, but you can't yell fire in a movie theater, which is actually not. The, 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 Look that up. It's not exactly true the way that that's always phrased. But uh, for the sake of simplicity, that's one of the examples used. You all have free speech, but you can't yell fire in a movie theater. Um, actually, you can. It's the penalty afterwards that matters. You, the, and why do I say that? Because nobody stops you, Joe, going into a movie theater and asks you to fill out a survey about what you're going to yell out in a movie theater. And nobody stops you walking into a movie theater based on your, say, conservative beliefs or anything like that and says, well, you're a conservative who may scream fire in a movie theater to test this out. So we're going to keep you out of the movie. In other words, it's not proactive. There's not a proactive prescription of liberty. Uh, oh, excuse me. Restriction of liberty. For, forgive me. There's not a proactive restriction on liberty. I actually have a prescription. <laughs> I, I'm, folks, I'm dead serious. I'm looking at my prescription right now. Talk about a Freudian slip. It's sitting right there. There's not a proactive uh, restriction of liberty there. There is a penalty if it's abused. If you do get up and, again, fire in a movie theater is not exactly a great legal example, but it's the one people know, and for the sake of an analogy, just roll with me for a minute. If you were to scream something like, you know, I'm going to shoot this movie theater up, there's a good chance you're going to be arrested. Although, you know, you did have free speech. You went in there. You had the right to free speech. You abused it. You said something or you threatened someone in the movie theater and in your arrest. In other words, show in a free society, we focus on penalties for bad behavior, not restricting behavior in advance. Yeah, that's the issue I have with the Second Amendment. We focus so much on supply side measures and restricting these freedoms in advance that we sometimes forget that the real incentive to stop criminals and the evil among us is in the penalty phase. We have to make real penalties because we've seen the restrictions don't work. I've already told you about restrictions on gun laws, how they haven't worked in the United States, how the assault weapons ban didn't work. I've already told you this, how the Australian gun ban didn't work. So Carlson says, there's a couple things we can do. Why don't number one, we focus on the penalties, penalties for gun crime, penalties for gun theft. Joe, you, you have a firearm legally or illegally. What do you got? You got something going on there? You look distracted. Oh, yeah. I, I Yeah. <laughs> Come on. It's part got, of the show. I got somebody coming out, going out the door right now, and I was uh, just talking to her, seeing what was going on. Show it. Joe's like having a side conversation. Well, talking. <laughs> what the hell's going on here? Yeah. <laughs> 
Hey, listen, this is good. You know, this isn't a live show, but you and I treat it like that. Oh, yeah. Because we leave this stuff. Joe can easily edit this out, but I just think it's funny. Like Sometimes we got to have... Yeah, I love the effect of a live show that's not live. Did you oh, ask me a question? <laughs> Yeah, I saw him. I'm like, I saw him. I'm like, what's he doing back there? You know what it reminded me of? If you ever watch Old School, um, one of my, oh no, excuse me, Wedding Crashers. The Wedding Crashers, confusing movies here. At the end of Wedding Crashers, right? Uh, they go to meet Will Ferrell, who's like the the grand poobah of Wedding Crashers, and he starts yeah. crashing funerals at the end. You see the movie, yeah. and he's and he they meet him in the house, and he realizes what a degenerate he is, and he comes down in his bathrobe after crashing a funeral and and meeting a woman at a funeral, and he's sitting on his couch. He lives with his mom, and he's like. What is she doing in there talking about his mom? <laughs> mom, the meatloaf. Make my friend some meatloaf. What are you doing? <laughs> what is she doing in there, Wilfred? That's what her mind. What is he? What is Joe doing? What is he doing in there? Joe, the meatloaf. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, folks. I get distracted. All right. Getting back to this. So we have to focus on the penalties. Focus on penalties for gun crime and for gun theft. You steal a gun, folks, you steal a gun, make it 10 years. Do 10 years. Do it. Why not? You steal a gun. You steal a gun and commit a crime with it. I mean, let's focus on the penalty. 20, 25 years. I'm open. I mean, I'm not, again, interested in police state tactics, but I'm interested in hearing an honest conversation about what the disincentive would be for people to stop doing that. Straw purchases, you buy a gun, you give it to someone who's a uh, who's prohibited from owning a gun or even constructively prohibited from owning a gun. There should be a penalty for it. So those are sensible solutions that would you know, potentially work. But again, the left is interested simply in supply side measures, which is really, really disappointing. Um, all right. Uh, what else are we going to get to today? I got a couple stories here. Let's see. All right. Let me try to squeeze one more in here. So Andy McCarthy has a really good piece up at National Review. It's a little bit lengthy. Um, but give it a shot. I, uh, I read through the whole thing this morning. Um, it's an excellent piece, and it's about the confusion that I see rampant amongst liberal commentators, Joe, when it comes to the powers of the presidency. Oh, oh, yeah. But the, you know what I'm talking like about? Lost, but the powers man. of the yeah. presidency only when it comes to Trump. Yeah. Like, remember, when Obama was the president and Obama enacted DACA with the pen and the phone, which was yeah. an unquestioned usurpation of legislative powers by the executive branch. Liberal commentators had no problem with it, despite the fact, as McCarthy points out in his piece, by the way, rather eloquently, that Obama himself said he couldn't do it. Yeah, I see yeah. what you're mouthing there. That's an FCC ban word, yeah. Joseph. You can't say that. <laughs> Joe, Joe turns his mic down and starts cursing. Did you know that, folks? <laughs> he does. He, cur- he starts cursing. He turns his mic off. Yes. He, Obama himself said he couldn't do DACA. I can't just do it, you know? And then he went and did it. (laughs) And a lot of liberal media outlets had no problem with that at all. But now all of a sudden, they have a a renewed focus on the powers of the presidency. And liberals want President Trump arrested, charged, (laughs) indicted, uh, I I mean, brought out in handcuffs for even the execution of his own powers uh, under the executive branch, which are defined by the executive branch. So McCarthy has a really good piece, a little lengthy in National Review, but he points out that these arguments for criminally charging Trump are ridiculous. Let me just quote quickly one part from the piece, and I want to show you what the real sanction on the president is, because folks, you can't indict or charge the president for executing his own powers. You can't. You could try. Good luck with it. But it's not going to work. There's a way to take care of that, but it's not it's not the criminal process. Here's a quote from the McCarthy piece. He says, it would be better if the president hewed to that norm and custom. It would have been better if Trump had not pled on Mike Flynn's behalf to FBI uh, Director James Comey, just as if it would have been better if Obama had not publicly announced in April of 2016 that he did not believe Mrs. Clinton should be indicted. But the fact that it would be preferable for a president to refrain from signaling how he wants an investigation to turn out does not mean such signaling is tantamount to a criminal obstruction felony. The authority that FBI agents and prosecutors exercise when they weigh in on the merits of an investigation or prosecution is the president's power. There is no power that the president's subordinates may exercise that he may not, regardless of norms and customs. Folks, all executive powers are vested in the president. Meaning Mm -hmm. the Department of Justice works in the executive branch Mm -hmm. and under the president. 
If this is making any of you uncomfortable, by the way, I promise I'm going to there is a check and a balance here. I'm not suggesting in any way that the president is a king or a monarch. Right. I'm simply suggesting to you that all executive powers are vested in the president, not the Department of Justice. The Department of Justice gets its power and derives its power from the president of the United States and the office of the presidency. So does the FBI that works for the Department of Justice. If the president had taken Comey in and demanded that he fire Jim Comey and demanded that he shut down down the mic, uh, uh, taking Comey in and <laughs> Jim Comey demanded that he fire himself. If he had taken Comey into his office and fired Jim Comey and then demanded that the Flynn investigation shut down. Let me, Joe, let me just be crystal clear what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. That's not advisable. It's right. not recommended. I'm right. not saying it's ethical or moral. Right. I'm simply saying, and I'm, I, I believe Mac- McCarthy's a skilled lawyer, that that is perfectly within his purview to do it. Right. There is no criminality or obstruction there. It is not going to work. You are not going to indict the president for executing his own powers. You may not agree with it. Now, you may say, well, gosh, what's to stop a president from just unilaterally becoming a tyrant and a, and a, and a, and a man king? Well, folks, we already have a process. Process is called impeachment. Mm-hmm. I don't know if this is a news flash to the left. Now, that's not saying where we, I'm talking about the execution of legitimate presidential powers. In other words, if the president were to, you know, uh, on a presidential trip, pull out a shank and stick it in someone's kneecap and attack someone, and obviously there's that is not the legitimate execution of presidential no. powers, folks. I mean, I'm being I'm using a ridiculous example, but it's tough talking to the left because they don't seem to understand it. But the president has the ultimate prosecutorial discretion. In other words, prosecutors that work for the Department of Justice, investigators that work for the FBI, their powers, as McCarthy says in that quote I just gave you, rewind it if you need to hear it again, are derived exclusively from the president. It is under his office. So you can't claim that if the president says, hey, we don't want to investigate that. We're going to investigate this. We don't want to do that. We're going to drop this. We're going to look into that. The power you have to do that is derived exclusively from the president. Do you understand that? It may not be advisable. I'm simply suggesting to you that it is not, it's not even remotely criminal. The process to get rid of the president is impeachment. He could be uh, he could be impeached in the House of Representatives. He would then go to trial in the Senate. Right, that's presided the first over. step. The impeachment. Yeah, yeah. Uh, first step to impeachment is obviously the the uh, basically the charges in the House, and then the trial in the Senate presided over uh, by uh, by the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court. That's the way it works. Bill Clinton was impeached. He he did not. He was not uh, convicted, so to say, in the trial in the Senate. Right. But, folks, that's the check and balance. The check and balance is you can get rid of the president via impeachment. It is not indictment or criminal charges for the legal execution of his powers, however politically unadvisable. Please read the piece. It's important you understand that because the left doesn't. They're so involved in the Trump derangement syndrome stuff, Joe, that they seem to be lost in all this. And it's really upsetting. Mm All right, folks, thanks for bearing with me today. I'm sorry in the beginning of the show to spend some time on that, but there really is a lot going on behind the scenes, and I really need you now. Uh, my audience, uh, please, if you wouldn't mind helping us out, we'd really appreciate it. So thank you so much. Please check us out at Bongino.com, and please check out the show notes today, always available at the website and on my email list if you join. Thanks so much. See you soon. You just heard the Dan Bongino Show. Get more of Dan online anytime at conservativereview.com. You can also get Dan's podcasts on iTunes or SoundCloud. And follow Dan on Twitter 24-7 at DBongino.